What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome to another episode of Imperial Diecast and today we're going to be taking a look at the scale 118 BMW 328i of the E46 generation made by Willy. What makes this car unique to me is that this is the first scale 118 model car that I bought in my life. So let me begin by telling you exactly how I ended up getting this car. Now this car I purchased somewhere between 2005 and 2008. This was a time when I was still going to school, and me and my friends used to travel one stop with the tram to a hobby store that was near our school. And that hobby store had Warhammer figures, among other things. They also had a lot of radio control cars and cars that you have to build yourself, like the Revel, the Fujimi, Aoshima, and stuff like that. Model planes as well. Lots of stuff. But back in the day, me and my friends were collecting Warhammer 40k, and that particular place had a couple of figures. So we used to go there, we used to buy some paints, we used to buy a couple of miniatures and so on. Then they stopped selling Warhammer 40k. And so my friends moved to Games Workshop, which is somewhere else in my city. I personally then no longer had any reason to come to the store alone. But I still decided to come again after school one day, just to, you know, take a last look at the store and stuff like that. And... I spotted this car among the other products there, and it was pretty much the only car that sort of caught my eye, primarily because of the fact that this was a car that is instantly recognizable. I mean, this is a BMW, this is a 328i, you know, 3 Series, E46 generation, one of the most common cars in Europe. And so I paid the 26 or 28 euros back in the day to get it. And I was very happy because it was such a huge car. I didn't have any other scale 118 car in my collection at home back then. Over the next 10 years or so, this car basically just stayed in my house in a corner without protection. Because the first thing that I did when I came home was throw away the box. Now that I'm a diecast model car collector, rule number one that I have learned is never throw away the box off a diecast car. Believe me. You're going to need it, even if you have a display cabinet at home. You should hang on to the boxes of the cars because, really, our biggest enemy is dust. And it's just such a headache to always clean the dust off our models that, you know, if you collect more than half a dozen to a dozen model cars, eventually you're going to not be looking at them all at the same time, right? The model cars that aren't adorning your shelf and things like that, you might want to put in the box so that it doesn't collect dust. Anyway, that's the background story of how I got this car. And I have to say that for a budget welly, because keep in mind that I paid less than 30 euros back in the day, today you can get this car for approximately 35 to 40 euros plus shipping. It's actually really good. I mean, this is no Kyosho, and yet it can hold its own. Probably because of the fact that this is the E46 generation, which to me personally is the best looking BMW generation ever. I mean, things went downhill after this pretty quickly. So if you add the looks of the E46 generation, especially when it comes to the front of the vehicle, and the fact that Willie did a solid job in creating the scale model car, this vehicle is just absolutely worth the money. The BMW E46 is an entry-level luxury car which was produced from 1998 to 2006 and was the fourth generation of the BMW 3 Series, which, apart from this four-door sedan, 
also included a two-door coupe, a two-door convertible, five-door touring estate wagon, and a three-door compact hatchback. A successor to the E36 styling, the E46 was replaced by the E90 from 2006 onward. This particular model, which is the pre-facelift BMW E46 328i, was sold between 1998 and 2000 and comes with a petrol engine which is a BMW M52 straight six cylinder with 190 horsepower and 0 to 100 kilometers per hour acceleration in 7.2 seconds, which is actually not too bad for an entry level four door sedan. The reason why I like the E46 generation the most is simply because they didn't go overboard with the styling, and at the same time, it didn't have the retro look of the 1980s BMWs. Looking at the front of this vehicle, you can see that the headlights are done in pretty good detailing. I mean, you can see the individual bulbs. There are no pegs obscuring the bulbs, and the bulbs themselves are done in a pretty detailed fashion. Now, of course, the unfortunate thing about it is the fact that we have pegs on the blinkers. And they're quite large ones. But if you can get over this, I think the front of the vehicle looks very nice. We have a license plate that says WEL328, which I assume is for Welly. And then we have fog lights further down, but unfortunately they also have pegs. Here's a closer look at that iconic BMW grill. Although it doesn't go all the way through, I think it's done very nicely. Now moving further up, we have the BMW logo right here. It's a print, I don't think it's a sticker, and unfortunately it's not sitting exactly where it's supposed to, it's slightly shifted to the right, but this is again something that you'd be nitpicking. The chrome itself is of okay quality, I mean you can see that on the close up here it is starting to wear off, but keep in mind that this car is 12 years old now pretty much, and therefore I think that because it spent 99% of the time outside, which it's not supposed to if you ask any model car collector, this is pretty much my fault and not really the fault of the model. So as I said, the front of the vehicle looks very nice and is arguably the best part about the entire car, but this car has a lot of other cool things to offer as well. Here's a look at the car's side profile. And immediately the first thing you will be able to tell is the fact that it has four window panels, not just two. This is pretty cool for a budget die-cast car, having all four window panels made out of glass. There's no rear vent glass present, making the rear passenger windows look that much bigger. But before we move on to the glass panels, let's first take a look at the rims. Now here's the interesting part about the rims. When I bought the car, these were not colored in. Instead, they looked like this. The rims had unpainted BMW logos, so I decided to color these BMW logos myself. Which is a little hard to do, considering the fact that these logos are so small. I used the same paints that I use for my Warhammer figures, which is Citadel acrylic paints. I think it was Altdorf Guard Blue, White Scar, and Abaddon Black. I then thinned the black paint down with water to create a wash to make the individual lug nuts stand out better, which is a technique called shading. The car comes with brake discs, where the perforation is hinted at because it doesn't really go through. And unfortunately, no brake calipers. And the brake discs move with the wheels. Keep in mind that this is an older Welly model. And now taking a look at the back of the vehicle. Another disappointment, unfortunately, are four pegs, each one holding each of the taillights in place. Now you can see that they needed four because this taillight is actually split in half and therefore needs to be fastened at two different places. The exhaust is matte silver on the car, but I decided to paint it black using a sharpie. And I think that it looks a lot better now. Looking at the rear license plate, you can see that it says well 328 as well here. And then we have the BMW logo on top of that, as you can see right there. And this time it sits well. And the 328i is a sticker. An interesting detail is this little circular indentation here, which is where you would lock the trunk. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, the trunk does not stay open. And if you look inside, there is not much to see there at all. I mean, you got some room, I guess, but 
Nothing much going on. Moving over to the other side of the car, one thing that you will notice are these mold lines. This is an unfortunate occurrence that happens sometimes during the die casting process. But what does make me feel a little better is the fact that this mold line also appears on this side of the car. So I would be pissed off if it was just on one side of the vehicle, but considering the fact that it happens on both sides, it sort of adds a little bit of a symmetry to the entire vehicle and therefore is more bearable. Now let's take a closer look at the engine. And again, a problem is that the engine cover does not stay open, so I'll have to hold it open. But you can see that the engine is done in a decent fashion. I mean, there is not much to see here, but interestingly, it does look quite similar to the actual BMW's engine in real life. Another interesting detail here is that we have the radiator visible through these air intakes, or at least parts of it. And these fall right into place. What I just noticed is that the front grille is actually perforated after all. So that's cool. Time to take a look at the interior of the car. The way you do this is you open the doors using the handles and an opening tool because the last thing you want to do is to use the mirrors or something like that because you cannot reach inside because of the fact that there's glass. Now if you look at the interior it's actually quite hard to see because everything is black so this is not one of the finer welly interiors out there. In fact, it's quite basic. I'd say this is Maisto level. Nothing is painted. However, we do have a lot of bits and bobs present in mesh form. I mean, in mold form, because you can see the individual buttons at the center console. You can see the air vents, including the centerpiece with which you can turn the airflow left or right. You got your gear shifter in the middle, surrounded by buttons. The seats themselves have a kind of a texture that make it look like actual leather, at least on first glance. Looking at the glass itself, or the plastic, this is a relatively well done glass for a budget car. It's thin, it's not extremely thick or anything like that. It doesn't refract too much, so I'm quite happy actually. Looking at the interior of the doors, you can see that we have the basic details in place. So really my only complaint right now is the fact that nothing is painted, but otherwise I'm actually happy with the amount of detail here on offer. The steering corresponds to the wheels swiveling from side to side, so that's good. And another good thing is that the wheels can stay the way they are, which allows for the car to be posed, like this or, for example, like this. Here's a closer look at the driver's side. You can see that the steering wheel is quite retro. I mean, this is a late 90s, early 2000s model. And we have the instrument panel represented by a sticker that includes the speedometer, rev meter, etc. Um, the interior is nothing great, but at the same time, the basic details are there. And then if we look at the passenger side, in the rear, there is not much going on here. Again, you have the same texturing on the seats. Looking at the bottom of the car, there's a couple things going on here. You can see the drive shaft, which is done in matte silver. You can see the mufflers and the exhausts over there. When I was trying to clean the car, I tried to take it apart. And you can see the individual screws. There's one over here. Then there's one over there. And one over there. And the fourth one is actually over here, but it's blocked by the muffler. So what you have to do to be able to take this car apart is you'll have to carefully pry this part out. It's fastened with a peg but it can be done and then you'll have to remove the screw from this side. But to be honest with you it's not really worth it because while I managed to get the undercarriage off I couldn't get the seats and the interior off so that I could clean the underside off the windshields and so on because those are soldered in place. So therefore it's not really worth taking this car apart. That being said, what else does it say here? It says Welly made in China, scale 118 BMW 328i. We got a basic amount of detail here but nothing else. 
overall I have to say that I'm quite happy with the shape this first scale 118 model car of mine is in, considering that I bought it almost 12 years ago and 99% of the time it was outside. I think Willie has done a good job on this, especially in the budget section. And to me, this is the best looking scale 118 BMW out there because of the combination of it being the E46, which is my personal favorite, and the fact that it is a budget car. If you want better quality than this, your next step is to go and buy a Kyosho, which starts at 80 euros and goes all the way up to, I think, 130 or even more than that. Another option you have if you want to pay more money for a better looking 328i E46 is to buy the UT Models version. The UT Models version does not have pegs on the blinkers or on the taillights, and it has different looking rims, as well as the fact that the rear doors can actually be opened. However, the price is around 70 to 80 euros, so almost double this. The main problem though is being able to find a UT Models one, because I think that they're quite rare. Your best bet is eBay. So for what you pay, you get a decent amount of quality here. I'm going to bring you more reviews in the weeks to come, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.